return to Ottawa for some high-level talks. So should we expect this message of contrition from the Prime Minister tomorrow, David? Yeah, that's still not clear, Rosie. We know that the, him and his top advisors met for several hours, but still no final decision has been made, and largely because they're waiting on a couple of things, namely the fact that it's a big day at the House of Commons Justice Committee tomorrow. New evidence today of a cover-up. Today at the Justice Committee, Liberal members shut down debate on a motion inviting Jody Wilson-Raybould to complete her testimony into Justin Trudeau's SNC-Lavalin corruption scandal. Quick background, Jody Wilson-Raybould came before the committee and testified to the Prime Minister's sustained political interference in his effort to shelve the prosecution of SNC-Lavalin for over $100 million of fraud and bribery charges. The Prime Minister granted only a partial waiver, allowing Miss Jody Wilson-Raybould to speak. That waiver only covered the period during which she was the Attorney General, but not the events afterwards, which caused her to resign from Cabinet altogether. Recorded vote, please, Mr. Clear. Recorded vote. I have Mr. another Mr. point Mr. of order. Mr. Clerk, I have another point. Have a request for a recorded vote. Please proceed to the roll call. I do have another point of order. Yes. This is a cover up. Mr. Assassi? You should be ashamed of your. That being said, the motion is adopted. The meeting is adjourned. Not only did they block my motion, they shut down debate on it all together. And worse than that, the chairman of the committee could not even look you in the eye. That liberal chair snuck out the back door. We need to march forward, my friends. Hold this prime minister accountable. He's hoping to shut down the entire investigation into the corruption scandal this coming Tuesday morning at a closed door secret meeting where all the cameras are off and the media are banned so that you don't know what goes on. He hopes that he can shut down the investigation, have a big glitzy deficit financed budget where he distracts Canadians with their own money and maybe even calls an early election. Let her speak. And Ms. Ramsey. I'm strongly voting opposed and I'm shocked at the behavior of my Despicable. colleagues. It's disgusting. So, so, that being said, you should be ashamed of your... That being said, the motion is adopted. The meeting is adjourned. It's like that. It was over. Opposition MPs forced an emergency meeting of the Justice Committee today to discuss the SNC-Lavalin controversy. They wanted to debate whether or not former Attorney General Jody Wilson-Raybould should be recalled to testify now that the Prime Minister's former Principal Secretary, Gerald Butts, has had his say. But just 24 minutes later, Liberal MPs voted to shut the meeting down. When I, I want to go back to what my Liberal colleague has said here. Uh, this is not business as usual for any committee. This is not business as usual in our country. And to say that they're going to hide behind uh, procedural rules, I want to tell you that a committee at the House of Commons, they are uh, masters of their own fate. I sit on a committee, I'm vice chair of the trade committee. A committee can determine to do anything that they want to do. We've seen this committee actually do things that haven't been done before. There's been an extension of time that she's been allowed to testify. There's been an extension of rounds of witnesses. We've had people from uh, unrecognized parties in the House be able to ask questions. So why is it that this one particular rule is the one that they're sticking on? It doesn't ring true to Canadians. And Canadians don't want to wait until next week. They wanted today to have an answer on whether or not she can come back to the committee. There's a big bit of a bombshell that went off today. Uh, a Justice Committee uh, had an emergency meeting to discuss the recall of uh, former Attorney General Jody Wilson-Raybould. First item of business from the Liberal side, adjourn it till next Tuesday. Uh, that's budget day. What's that tell you about uh, which way this is going to go? It sounds to me like they're not going to let her come back. Well, it's quite clear that Justin Trudeau ordered his MPs on that committee uh, to engage in a cover-up to block our attempts to have Ms. Wilson-Raybould back, and most importantly, to lift the gag order that is preventing her from speaking the full truth as it relates to the story. So uh, do you think it's all part of a plot to get this decision behind closed doors on a budget day when majority of media are locked up without their cell phones? Uh, is that what they're all doing here? That is the only possible conclusion. The, the motion that we had put forward today was to have her back and, and to have these discussions 
in the light of day with full transparency and accountability. Uh, just about a week ago, we heard Justin Trudeau uh, say nice messages about those types of things. But once again, when action is required, when he has a choice to do the right thing, uh, he doesn't. <laughs> Allegations in the Globe story this morning are false. Her presence in Cabinet uh, should actually speak for itself. I continue to be puzzled uh, and obviously disappointed by her decision to step down from Cabinet. We believe in the independence of the judiciary and we believe uh, in fighting for good jobs and we will always do that in the right way. I strongly maintain, as I have from the beginning, that I and my staff always acted appropriately and professionally. Over the past months, there was an erosion of trust between my office and specifically my former principal secretary and the former Minister of Justice and Attorney General. So the Prime Minister's narrative has changed over the past month since the SNC-Lavalin story first broke. But today, Justin Trudeau gave his first full press conference all about this issue and expressed some regrets. Just start with, with today. Uh, when we were sort of warned or told that we might get some sort of um, act of contrition or message of contrition, I'm not sure that that's what I expected. Chantal, what did you make of it? I thought the contrition thing was out the window after I listened to Gerald Butts' uh, narrative yesterday because, uh, and uh, the clerk of the Privy Council and the Deputy Minister of Justice, all three agreed that uh, they felt that nothing inappropriate had taken place. I had a hard time seeing how Justin Trudeau could come and nail down a narrative that would have have a, a, a major act of contrition if no one regrets anything. What Mr. Trudeau had to say resists uh, uh, analysis, but uh, I think we can take the message from it that the government, after all this, has come down to a narrative and they will hang on to it now, come hell or high water. Promises they can make or break a prime minister. Justin Trudeau promised to do things differently. Politics is in his blood. When he was born on Christmas Day in 1971, the nation literally celebrated his birth. And when he was sworn in as Prime Minister just 44 years later, it looked like Trudeau mania all over again. Canadians lined the streets to catch a glimpse of the Trudeaus, Justin, his wife Sophie. So how did he pull off that victory? Remember, the Liberals were in third place and he won a majority with the promise of real change. Trudeau arrived on Parliament Hill with a record 15 women in his cabinet, in particular two high-profile newbie MPs seemingly thrilled by his pledge to do politics differently, Jody Wilson-Raybould and Jane Philpott. And when he was, uh, was asked why so many women, his answer went viral. Because it's 2015. And those two high-profile women he put on a pedestal seems they were pretty serious about doing things differently. Both have resigned as cabinet ministers. And now another MP, Selena Cesar Chavon, says she was met with anger after she told Trudeau she would not be seeking re-election. Telling the Globe and Mail, he was yelling, he was yelling that I didn't appreciate him, that he'd given me so much. Joining me now to talk about all of this is Liberal MPP and former Ontario Premier Kathleen Wynne. So quite a week or two. Uh, you've got two senior cabinet ministers have resigned. Now you've got another MP uh, who is saying that the, the PM was yelling at her. So he said he was going to do things differently. Is he that doing things differently feminist PM or is he the man that these women are portraying? So I, I don't I don't think the one excludes the other precludes the other. You know I think that um, one of the unfortunate things that has happened is that this incident, which is serious, Wendy. I mean I, I am not uh, I'm not in any way diminishing the severity of what has happened, and um, there is more that needs to be done, and and it needs to be repaired. This is almost like a mutiny. You know you stood by your former premier Dalton McGuinty when he was caught up in a in a scandal. Normally parties stick together. They're they're like stabbing in the in the face that they're doing politics differently there are 
uh, there are bridges that can be built and there's a way of bringing people together. It is up to him to do that. It's up to him to figure out how to do that. How do you this, do that? It just keeps happening. He reaches out and Jody Wilson Rabel says, no, buddy, and now you've got another MP well, saying I don't, stop yelling at Yeah, him. I don't know, but that's part of the leadership role. I am surprised that in your evidence you don't make reference to two people that I think played a very big role in this drama, the mm -hmm. clerk of the Privy Council mm -hmm. and the lawyer for snc Lavalin. So I'm going to ask how it is that you don't seem to recognize that the heaviest intimidation of our former Attorney General came from one-on-one -on -one meetings with the clerk of Privy Council September 19th and that with that following phone call December 19th. I find the accusations leveled against him completely inconsistent with his character. It is not a day of apologies for the Prime Minister. Speaking in Ottawa this morning, Justin Trudeau finally gave a detailed statement on the SNC-Lavalin controversy four weeks after the story first broke. He says he was unaware of an erosion of trust between officials in his office and former Attorney General Jody Wilson-Raybould. Trudeau offered no apology, arguing he will always stand up for jobs, but there was no inappropriate pressure on Wilson-Raybould to seek a deferred prosecution agreement for SNC-Lavalin. CBC's David Cochran has been on the SNC story from the start. He joins us now. David, thank you very much hey, for your David. time this afternoon. Uh, this was supposed to be this morning in Ottawa, a statement of contrition. Is that what we saw from the Prime Minister? I think to a degree, yes, but I think it was more a, an act of explanation than an act of contrition. You know, best described, I would say, as an expression of regret as to how things have played out. What was interesting is that this is the first time the Prime Minister has actually dedicated an event to responding to this ongoing controversy for the first time in a month, bringing a level of seriousness and urgency to it after responding to Jody Wilson-Raybould's resignation, standing in front of a bus in Winnipeg, and then trying to deal with Jane Philpott at a climate rally on Monday in Toronto. But so he came there to talk specifically specifically about SNC-Lavalin, but he did not specifically say he was sorry. And this was something that was notably absent after the, the stories we'd all done about expecting an act of contrition. And our colleague Amanda Connolly called him on that and asked him this question. Take a listen to this. Are you apologizing for anything today? Um, I will be making an Inuit apology this afternoon. But in regards to, uh, and in regards to standing... In regards to standing up for jobs and defending the integrity of our, our rule of law, um, I continue to say that there was no inappropriate pressure. Justin Trudeau says there was no inappropriate pressure on the former Attorney General, Jody Wilson-Raybould. He was just defending jobs. She was just experiencing everything differently than he did. But he did admit that there was an erosion of trust between uh, the Prime Minister's office and Ms. Wilson-Raybould. We all knew that. Meantime, Another high-powered minister who resigned, Jane Philpott. You've got another MP, Selena uh, Cesar Chavanes, who apparently does not the believe that the prime minister has lived up to his words about listening to women in a tweet. And now a new story in the Globe and Mail. What was the most damaging part of the week? Did the prime minister help or hurt his cause? Let me start Thanks. with you, Bob. The Globe broke this story. You talked to Selena Cesar Chavanes. This is a... a a liberal MP who's decided not to run again. She had a cryptic tweet saying that essentially Justin Trudeau doesn't live up to his I listen to women. Uh, what it, tell us a bit about that, the, the impact of this story and what she's saying. Well, Miss Cesar Savannah had an interview with the Golden Mail's Laura Stone and she said the Prime Minister had treated her with hostility. When she informed him that she did not plan to run again, he yelled at her, according to Ms. Cesar Savannah, she said he yelled at her and said, you can't do this. You gotta hold off on this announcement because of this controversy. I can't afford to lose two color women of color. And then, uh, she went to see him again to sort of try to make up with him and she said he just stared her down and treated her with hostility. So uh, the Prime Minister has got a problem here with at least three women uh, and, and it, it's going to damage his reputation as the feminist Prime Minister if he treats women like this. We shouldn't be afraid of the word feminist. Yeah. Men and women <laughs> should use it to describe themselves. <laughs> Anytime they want. It's blowing away the whole gender strategy that this government uh, is so much of a core of what it represents. Everywhere you go, women are angry 
about the way he's been treating women, and, and you're hearing this from the caucus also. We don't know why the director of public prosecutions has decided to proceed with a prosecution, mm -hmm. or why Jody Wilson-Raybo decided mm -hmm. to back her. But let's look at the evidence. This is a company banned for 10 years from the World Bank for bribery and fraud. Right. This is a company of which one of its major executives was convicted of bribing and corruption in Switzerland. This is a company that was found guilty and the CAO pleaded guilty for the McGill uh, Health Center, University yeah. Health Center. This is a company now under RCMP investigation for the Champagne Bridge uh, issue. And, and if you look at that, this is not a company this is a culture. It looks like a culture of corruption in this company. And a, t a deferred prosecution agreement is supposed to be for a few bad apples, not the whole barrel of bad apples. And I think that's the problem. But uh, there are still that workers the government involved. You see, mm -hmm. that's the whole issue, is that it's true. You're, you're quite right. But there are workers involved, and the deferred prosecution, the, only problem the objective with that, Joyce, of the is deferred that prosecution have... is to protect those who should not be punished for the but, sins of their managers. That is the, basically the only problem the with that is even Gerald Botts admitted at committee yes. they yes. never even did a study to find out if any jobs were right if going those to be nine thousand jobs if that yeah. statistic that they've if quoted has any that, evidence yes. guys I got to leave it there one thing I can tell you the debate has not stopped every <laughs> single day there's something new.